I want to talk about Gary Urofsky today. Now, for those of you who don't know, Gary Urofsky is one of the most iconic animal rights activists there are. He's given a number of really famous speeches and he's appeared on television making the case of veganism. I think I've binge watched his entire work several times over. He's also been vegan for longer than I've actually been on the planet and that's quite impressive. But I want to talk about his 1997 mink liberation action today. Now, If you don't know what mink are, mink are very territorial, semi-aquatic, small mammals. Now, surprisingly, animal rights activists don't seem to ever criticise the liberation of mink, but I think there's a pretty strong case for it. But let's start at the beginning. What is so unethical about mink farming in the first place? Farm mink spend almost their entire life in battery cages. Here, they can't exercise any of their natural behaviours, like running or swimming. And they often revert to self-mutilations or cannibalism even. At about six months of age, they get killed, typically either by electrocuting, breaking their neck or gassing them. And because they spend a lot of time in the water, in nature, they can hold their breath for a very long time, which means that gassing them takes quite a while to actually kill them. The fur industry is incredibly sick and unethical. I don't see how anyone could defend this. I also want to mention that I don't think that breaking unjust laws is unethical if it serves the purpose of making the world a better place. So then, what is my problem with liberating mink? I'll tell you what the problem is. Mink are carnivores. That's the problem. If you release them, the first thing they're going to do is whip another animal's head off. Mink feed on all sorts of aquatic life, small mammals, birds, eggs, and in some cases even other mink. Mink have established wild populations in many countries in the world, and many people attribute this to activists freeing the animals. What this means is that the mink will just breed naturally, and then the violence continues in the next generation, and the next one, and the next one. I know that mink don't deserve the horrible treatment they get in the fur industry, but releasing them just replaces one form of suffering with another. Yeah, sure, mink killing other animals in nature is natural, while us farming them is not. But so what? Do you think that the animals that get whipped apart by mink care about the fact that their suffering is natural? If you don't believe me how bad suffering in the wild actually is, I've made an entire video about it. Breeding mink is unethical. We shouldn't do it, full stop. But what to do with the already existing mink poses a real moral dilemma. We could kill them, which is bad for the mink. We could release them, which is bad for prey animals. Or we could feed them meat, which would again be bad for the animals that get killed for the mink. I think that killing the mink and then stopping with the industry is probably the least harmful way we can deal with the situation. And don't get me wrong, I really appreciate Gary Yurovsky's work. I'm very much inspired by it. But I think that on this particular issue, he was wrong. And there's another problem to all of this. People have this idea of vegans being militant and horrible to every other human. If we play into this by breaking the law or berating farmers or whatever, do you think people will actually get convinced of veganism? I think a love-based, peaceful attitude is much more effective. One of these forms of activism is bearing witness to the animals when they are brought to the slaughterhouse. I've made a video about how these work and how you can get involved as well. What do you think? Is liberating mink a good idea? If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and take care.